Uh, resuming debate to the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to rise to enter into this debate. Housing in Canada, as we all know, we're faced with a intense, chronic housing crisis. In fact, I would argue that the Conservatives, when they were in government, they were the ones who cancelled the co-op program, a proven model in Canada that provides safe, secure, affordable housing to community members. And more than that, they provide a community within a community through that model. And what did the Conservatives do in 1992? Oh, they cancelled the national co-op housing program. Now, based on the discussion and the leader of the Conservatives, you would think that they're going to be the savior in addressing the housing crisis. But let us be clear, they were the people that helped cause the housing crisis that we are faced with today in this country. Now, of course, after the Conservatives cut funding for housing programs, eliminated the co-op program altogether, we had the Liberals come into office. And what did they do? They cancelled the National Affordable Housing Program in 1993, escalating, further escalating the housing crisis. The truth is, both Liberals and Conservatives, successive Liberal and Conservative governments, failed Canadians. They failed to ensure that there is social housing built. They failed to ensure that there is co-op housing built to the point of where we are today. I still remember when I was in the community in 1993, working as a community legal advocate, the shock that went through my system and our whole community when we heard the government canceled the program. Part of my job was to try and assist people, seniors, people with disability, indigenous people, women, women fleeing violence, women who needed housing because they were in a, violent, in a domestic violence situation and they needed housing for them and their children and their inability to access that housing and as a result, losing their children because they could not secure safe, affordable housing. Not because they're a bad parent, but because the, the government, the federal government, successive liberal and conservative governments walked away from them and did not provide for the housing that was critically needed then. Fast forward to today and where are we at? We have a situation where just today a report came out in my community, in Vancouver, Vancouver East, and in the greater Vancouver area, they found with the most recent study on the homelessness count, that it increased by 30% from the last count. And, you know, and the truth is, I, in many ways, I don't need a report to tell me so, although having that data is really important because I see it in the community, the encampments that have service in our community. It is everywhere. It's proliferated everywhere. In my riding of Vancouver East, we have a permanent encampment. What is wrong with this picture? You have to ask this question. Why is it that successive liberal conservative governments allow this to happen? It is unjustifiable. Housing is there for people to live in. It is not there as a commodity for investors to turn a bigger and bigger profit. And that's what's happened over the years since the Liberals and Conservatives walked away from co-op and social housing. They allow for the market to flourish and then to benefit from it at the expense of people who need homes. Not only are people unhoused, renters are getting rental evicted, seniors on fixed income, long-time tenants in a building being displaced, being rental evicted to a place that they will no longer have access 
to a home, to a home. They can't afford a home to the place where they've lived for many years. They will no longer be able to live there. This was allowed under both liberals and conservatives and was escalated. I would say, by their bad housing policy, by them walking away from the people in our communities that are in need. Madam Speaker, the Liberals, I know back in 2017, you will hear them say that they have now entered back into the housing environment with the National Housing Strategy. But if anybody has taken the time, and I urge all Liberal members to take up the report from the Auditor General that indicated that the government's programs, they don't even know who's benefiting from the programs. In fact, they don't even know those who are in need, those who are most vulnerable, are accessing the supports that they need. And so incompetence would be one way of saying it, but it is not justifiable with where things are at today. So now the Conservatives, with the Conservative leader, who, who goes around be acting as though he is the savior. Well, let's us just be clear. When he was part of the Harper administration and as a cabinet minister, under that administration, Canadians lost 800,000 units right. of affordable housing. That's close to a million units. A million families or individuals could have had access to that housing that they would not have now. And what's their solution today? More market-driven solutions. Let us just be clear. It's the market-driven solutions that the government had relied on that got us here today. Nowhere, nowhere does the Conservative, in their plans, talks about building social housing or co-op housing. And then for the Liberals, their program does not talk about affordability. How strange is it? What planet do we live on when we operate in this way? No wonder we have the housing crisis, Madam Speaker. Now, the bill that the government has tabled on the GST piece is to facilitate more housing to be built. And I want to be, be clear to say this, Madam Speaker, yes, we need more housing, but we also need to make sure that the housing that's built is accessible to people. That means that it truly is affordable to people. And it's strange to me that the government decided, in some weird altered universe in this bill, that they decided that they would exclude co-ops from accessing the GST exemption. Why on earth would you do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. The co-op program, as indicated, is a proven model in the delivery of housing in our communities. They create communities within communities. You can see it when you actually walk into a co-op uh, housing uh, project. You can see the love within the community, the supports that are there for each other. They take care of each other and they build communities with each other. To not support them makes no sense, and the NDP will absolutely be moving amendments to address that issue. The other piece that the NDP will be doing is that calling on the government to amend the bill to allow for existing nonprofit housing projects to be able to access this exemption. This will allow for some projects to be become viable in other instances for projects to create better affordability for the communities in need. That's what we need to do to work towards in that direction. We also need to actually set up some level of eligibility criteria in terms of affordability to make sure that the private developers that are coming in are not just going to get a benefit, but that there is a further return to the community, and that is on the affordability criteria, Madam Speaker. We have to think about housing in a holistic way, and the NDP is put for putting forward these ideas, and, f and above all else, we need the government to build social housing, to build co-op housing like we used to. Housing is there for people to live in and not just to make a profit, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments. Questions and commentaires. The Honourable Member for Peace River, Prince George, Prince George, Peace River, North and Rockies. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I appreciate the member's question, but I guess I'd, I want to ask her a question or a speech, but I'd like to ask her a question back. Uh, I represent, uh, through my portfolio, uh, the territories. And one thing that I'll be speaking about in the House today is about the lack of housing in Nunavut, specifically. 
And because of inflation and carbon taxes, unit per unit costs have risen to $1.1 million. And that's why no units got built this year, right? Because they're just simply too expensive, as uh, the, the local government has even said. My question to the, uh, to the member is, if it's so bad with this current Liberal government, why do they keep supporting them in the House? Why? Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Unlike the Conservatives, where, where the NDP is at is this. We're here to fight for the people, to get more for the people. We're not just here to talk about, hey, see how great we are, and then deliver nothing. And then be part of a previous administration that cuts housing programs for the people in need. What we're doing is creating affordability through different means, and that's why we fought tooth and nail to get the dental care plan. Yes, the leader of the Conservatives have had access to dental care services all his life through the public service. But you know what? Most Canadians do not. And we will fight tooth and nail on affordability on all fronts. Questions and comments. Questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberney. Heard Conservatives talk about selling 6,000 buildings and uh, selling 15 percent of public lands. Well, we only need to look at Ontario, where the Doug Ford Conservatives uh, did a deal, Madam Speaker, at the Greenbelt, where they sold uh, public lands and put $8.3 billion into the pockets of developers. We've seen in our home province of British Columbia, where the B.C. Liberals sold private lands to benefit their friends. Donors to the B.C. Liberal Party. Madam Speaker, through you to my colleague, what policies and framework would she like to see in place to protect Canadians from Conservatives and their friends and their donors? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. If you... Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. For the federal government to make available federal lands for the development of housing, first and foremost, that you need to ensure there's a public return to the community. Unlike the Conservatives, they don't want to put any requirements in place because they only want to line the pockets of their pals so that the investors and developers can line their pockets. For the NDP, there has to be return to the community. And you know what? In, in the spirit of reconciliation, what we have to do is to make land available and land back to Indigenous people, first and foremost, and then second, for buildings that are made available for development to turn into social housing, it has to be social housing or co-op housing, reduce the rent to below market so that people can access to it and it's truly affordable for the community. Here, here. Honourable Member for San